Uh, hello. The, the new GFS model went into effect uh, two days ago, worldwide, global model. Now includes the new simulated uh, radar uh, parameter called comp composite uh, reflectivity, REFC. But uh, many of the programs that we're using will not have that parameter available yet to ask for although uh, some programs will show it. So what I want to do here is to make a, a general note. It was motivated by getting GFS to GFS and REFC. However, this, uh, this technique applies to getting any GRIB model uh, directly from the primary source at NCEP. And so the article is written up, and I'll put this uh, link in the description about where it is. Here's a here's the whole thing for people who like to read things rather than the movies. Um, and uh, and I'm just adding here. Uh, I'm going to do it in a few steps because there's quite a few things involved here once we get the files. But this is the process, and it's all laid out here. But I'm just going to step through it. And, uh, and then so we start out. Here's the primary link right here. And if you click this link here, you go to the main page at Nomads. And this is where all the models are. There's all kinds of models here. And uh, you could uh, you look over these. You can apply this technique to all of them. There's some slight variations on the way you ask for parameters and what the parameters are. But here's HRR and so forth. I'm going to concentrate for now on a, a GFS 25 degree and the one the, the place we want to use is this grib filter here in the middle so you click the glib click the grib filter and then you come over here and then these are the latest models run this is uh, all the day at 614 it is uh, it's actually just turned uh, it's right now to two o'clock Zulu on June 15th but this is the latest one here and these are the different model runs and in this example which I did like earlier today we're going to take the 12 o'clock Zulu normally you'd take the latest one up here at the top but we did 12 o'clock you just click that one and this would be the model this would then be the model that was run at 12 Zulu now this is not the latest the latest at this moment was 18 Zulu and here's where you choose the actual this is this is that model and here's where you check check what forecast there at every uh, at every synoptic time 0, 06 12 and 18 they run 384 of these I think something like that 16 days uh, clearly it's only the first uh, four or five days that matter uh, that are reliable and then also I would note I would skip this analysis for now I'm not going to discuss that and we will treat the the zero zero forecast as a surface analysis essentially and then this is every hour one two three four five now also in our programs we may not realize in our request programs that GFS is actually available every hour however most programs only let us choose 3 6 12 or something like that but by this method when you go in and get your own data if you want to do some weather routing a little more precise and so forth you can actually get the GFS model every hour not have to then let your program interpolate it but we're going to just for an example and you do these one at a time and that's a it's a little bit of a handicap here we have to do them one at a time but uh, I'll show you I'll show you very quickly that we can actually request these from uh, sail docks uh, three or four at a time uh, so we but essentially it's one at a time so this is then let's just pick the zero zero forecast on this June uh, uh, June 14th 12 Zulu run um, now I, I said sail docks you cannot request this as a para you cannot for example request REFC composite reflectivity you can't request that from sail docks in their GFS model just like you can't from Zygrib or other places um, because th uh, th they don't have it in there yet but they will it just literally became available two days ago but this way you can jump the gun a little bit. So then the next thing we have to do is we have to choose what parameter. Normally, the order here, they want you to choose levels first and then parameters. But it makes more sense to think in terms of parameters first and then levels. And I'm going to go here where I've got some of these filled out. Is that the one? No. No. This one. Okay. So I filled this one out. Uh, because you have to hunt around here in these. But here's the thing I want to do just with this test case. We want pressure. And so this is the best pressure to use. PRMSL, pressure means sea level. This is pressure on land. 
this is a, actually back here. This is actually a more accurate pressure, but that we, we need to leave that to a separate discussion. This is a normal pressure most of the GRIB, uh, GRIB uh, programs provide to you. Uh, we'll come back to this fancy one a little bit later. So we want that pressure. We want this. This is a new parameter, composite reflectivity. We want that one. And then we want the wind speed. And the way that NOAA, NOMADS, gives us this data is they give us a wind speed as a vector. They give us the UGRD. This is actually, I believe that's the east-west component of the wind. And this is the VGRAD. That's the north-south component of the wind. I may have those backwards. But then the, then the vector program will put them together and make a real vector pointing you know, wind at 20 knots at uh, 315 or 302 or something like that. The, the program does that. But this, the native grip files present it this way. So that's that. Then the next thing, then we have to put the levels that we want to look at. And you, you could, in a sense, cheat and click all, but then you're going to get huge big files of stuff you don't want. So let's just go through. Uh, here's what you need. You need 10 mil millimeter, uh, mil <laughs> 10 meters above the ground. That's for your wind speed. Then you need entire atmosphere, not this not this one considered as Leo, but this one, entire atmosphere, check mark. That's for the REFC. And then for the wind, you will need uh, 10 meters above the ground. Let's see. For mean sea level is what you need for the pressure. So you check those. Now, then down here, you want to check the region you're looking at. This is an area around the Canaries that I've set up here. And uh, longitudes, uh, e, uh, west longitudes are negative numbers. So this is from 41 west to 16 west. And then uh, this is a top latitude 40 north north to 26 north and we'll see maybe in the next video or something where this is but this is a chunk of uh, the map uh, surrounding the canaries over to uh, over to uh, in that area and then so make a subregion now the first thing you want to do then is put a check mark in this box and then you say download download it then uh, let's see we're live here I just should have <laughs> could have faked this but with a live download let's see is that going to work yeah, it does work. Okay, so then what this does is this generates the request. Now, ultimately, this is what you need. This is what you need. And so you want to copy that and put it somewhere in this article. Um, in this article, I have I put it here as a copy of uh, what we get. So there's a sample of what you get. And you see, this is the zero, zero forecast. And here's the time and what parameters you want so forth. But once you have this, you can just tweak this thing and mail it back and forth uh, to get the data that way. Okay, so here's that. That's that. So we didn't get the data. We just got the uh, we just got the format for asking for more data. If we if we if we want to do it away from this page, all we need is that format. So then you uncheck that and say start the download. Now it'll bring the data, and it looks like this. Now, that's going to come in like this. That's a zero, zero forecast of that. But what you might do here, I don't know if we can get away with it at this step, but I would just say, let's just, just download this for now. But we've got to tack on a dot .grib on that. Okay, so we save that. So you save that and you've got the file. Then what we're going to, then uh, that's, the, that's, the way, that's the way you get the file. And then what you would do is go in, that's the one we did here. I've got several here. I'm going to show you something else. And then what I what, what you would do then is just go in and rename, right click, rename it, rename the file right here, rename it, and just put .grb on the back. Okay, that's all there is to that. Now, uh, and so that's basically the answer. You got the grib file uh, that you wanted. Now I just want to show how to get these from uh, SailDocs. So with Sail, oh, this is a picture here. Okay, what is this? Mail to SailDoc. So what I did here, here's a sample where I just type in. Here's the. Um, you just send this query at SailDocs.com. Query at SailDocs.com. You put send this. Right, that's that first one. Then notice I change this. I want zero 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 six zero twelve. So that's a twelve Zulu. June 14th model run, and I'm asking in this particular map, and we request just these, these three files, these three files like that. So you send that. Let's see, where did that go? All right, and then your mail you get back, you'll get 
one mail back for each one. And uh, we're not investigating how this works right now or anything like that. I'm just saying you can do it and it'll work, okay? So, and then you get back the file and here, this is not, now look, this is a different way. The first way I did it here, I'm online and internet and I'm asking for the file and I'm getting it. And I can keep asking one, two, three, four times any, anything I want. have to ask one at a time. But here I just asked SailDocs to do this for me and send me three of them. And this I could do at sea, right? At sea, the middle of the ocean. I send an email and get them from the middle of the ocean. Here I'm sitting in my house with the internet. Okay, so then I get these three. Then what, I, what you do is you're going to have three of those, and then you just can go in your email. It depends a little bit how your email works. And then you just grab this file. That's a picture, not a file, so I can't do it. You just grab this and drag it into here. Drag it into here. And then you drag and you got all three of them. So that's like three that's like three hours of them. And I'm gonna stop the video here because that's all I want to do for now. How you can request these custom maps, custom grid grib files, and then uh, later we'll look at other parameters that are gonna be besides this new REFC, once you get accustomed to asking for parameters of your choice, I will recommend a couple other special ones that could be very interesting for tactics and uh, weather analysis.